Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. Well, Victorians will be banned from entering Tasmania from midnight, tightening restrictions for the nation's coronavirus hotspot. Under new measures, locals returning home will be forced into hotel quarantine and those without an exemption will be turned around. An empty Hobart airport suddenly coming to life this afternoon as passengers stream from today's only flight, a service from Melbourne. People making the dash from an escalating coronavirus situation in Victoria. Because we're on the border, everyone's, you know, more just inconvenienced by, you know, having to get all the permits. Six weeks in lockdown is pretty full on, so I'm not even in a suburb that's that affected. So I was just like, get over here, see the family. The flight was seemed to be full of Tasmanian residents coming back. The last flight into Hobart before a new ban on Victorians comes into effect at midnight. If you're from Victoria, please don't come to Tasmania. Uh, if you do come to Tasmania and you haven't been granted an exemption, uh, then we will send you home. Announcing a border crackdown for those travelling from the coronavirus hotspot, visitors without an exemption turned around. Tasmanians returning from Victoria forced into hotel quarantine for 14 days. Everyone who actually arrives in Tasmania will have to face a biosecurity officer uh, to make sure they've got the right paperwork, they've got the right applications. Biosecurity also stationed at Tullamarine Airport and the Spirit of Tasmania Terminal in Melbourne. The government warning exemptions will be unlikely. Those entering from other states who transit through the airport will be allowed in if they don't leave the terminal. As Victoria to some extent demonstrates, if you're in a very relaxed environment where everybody is mixing substantially as they used to, things can get out of hand quite quickly. Would you look at potentially opening our borders earlier than July 24? No. No. We, um, we've laid down a plan in terms of how we would approach um, opening up our borders. More information on borders coming on Friday, but confirming Victorians will be locked out for at least six weeks. The plan welcomed. If that hadn't been clamped down, uh, there would be some very serious concerns given how it's escalating in Victoria. It's really important at the moment that we do protect Tasmanians and if that is not opening borders with Victoria, well so be it. But unions have continued to air concerns over interstate workers travelling into Tasmania without being tested. We've seen a steady influx of interstate workers the whole time um, that the state has been in lockdown. I suppose the disappointing thing for us is the messaging that the community has been told is our borders are closed and no one's coming in. There is a rigorous process that people have to go through to uh, to get those exemptions. It goes to biosecurity in the Pipwe, uh, that is assessed. Public health warning Victoria's outbreak serves as a reminder against Tasmanians becoming complacent. It's probably sensible to move very cautiously, perhaps slowly, towards any further relaxations. But that doesn't mean that, that in public health we're not looking at, at, at whether it can be done. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Well, to other news now, and a police officer accused of being behind the wheel of a car involved in a fatal crash has faced court for the first time. Aaron Tasman Bonner is facing multiple charges over the incident that claimed the life of a man and left a woman in a critical condition. Our reporter Sean McCaimish has more. Aaron Tasman Bonner fronted the magistrate's court this morning following a fatal pedestrian crash in Launceston on January 6. The incident unfolded when a police car responding to an emergency drove through a red light at the intersection of St John and Patterson Streets. It collided with another vehicle and was sent hurtling towards two people from New South Wales who were crossing the street. A man died at the scene while a woman suffered serious injuries. At the time, police confirmed the vehicle had its emergency lights activated, but not its siren. A professional standards investigation was launched into the tragedy. In April, the 39-year-old constable behind the wheel was charged and stood down from duty. Today, he faced court over manslaughter, causing grievous bodily harm, causing the death of another person by negligent driving and causing grievous bodily harm by negligent driving. Mr Bonner did not enter a plea. His bail was continued. He'll return to court on September 10. Tasmanians are rushing to make the most of a record-high home builder grant. 
Doubling up state and federal schemes, $45,000 is now available to eligible people building their own home. Applications for the initiative officially opened on Monday, with more than 1,500 Tasmanians already registering their interest. The grants are available for those with a contract signed before the end of the year. Tasmanian entrepreneur Mort Douglas has died aged 85. Described by his family as an infectious character, Mr Douglas changed the Launceston and St Helens commercial landscapes. His business interests changed the city and were capped off with a memorable catch cry. We really want your business. Look forward to seeing you. Mort Douglas etched his name in Tasmanian commerce as a furniture mogul before etching his name more literally in the year 2000, bankrolling the $6 million Morty's retail precinct in Launceston CBD. Mort Douglas wants to turn the corner of Brisbane and Wellington streets into a convenience store development. The entrepreneur was larger than life, but not above negotiation. His now trademark retail development had to be redrawn, so it preserved the heritage features of the 1930 service station on which it was built. I didn't think this could be done, I honestly didn't, but uh, we worked on it for three days, my architect and myself, and uh, I, I think we've come up with something better. His interest extended to St Helens, building the multi-million dollar Morty's on the Bay business complex. The family of Mort Douglas described him as tough, driven, charming, and someone who will be missed by many. The Morty's complex stands today as an enduring legacy. Mort Douglas was 85. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The RACT and First Energy are teaming up to provide an electricity deal that could save Tasmanians an average of $120 on power bills. An energy analyst says it could lead to more competition between retailers, but there are fears that they could sting the average consumer. A cold start to winter and more Tasmanians working from home has seen, for some, a spike in electricity consumption and the price of bills. The RACT says its members are struggling with life expenses, coming together with First Energy. A deal for members, providing a discount to those who pay bills before the due date. That brings reduced uh, electricity prices to our RACT members. Uh, this deal, which is the first in, in the state, provides a 6% discount on the cost of electricity to homes. They say it would save the average Tasmanian household $120 per year, but energy analysts say there's a catch. Well, I guess the fine print is the late payment fees, um, which are more significant than Aurora's, uh, but we certainly encourage competition. Currently, Aurora, Tasmania's main energy retailer, has a $5 late payment fee. First Energy also has fees for dishonoured payments. Costs are also involved to switch between retailers, who have very similar pricing. Um, you should obviously take that into account and do your research. Um, the Energy Made Easy website is, should be your first port of call and that'll lay out all the different terms and conditions. In Tasmania we haven't seen that competition. Uh, what RACT is hoping to do is, is see that their price uh, for energy, and particularly uh, electricity in Tasmania, is a fair price. Those considering the switch are advised to check the terms and conditions. Ebony Applett, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania is tapping into the electric car market with more public charging stations rolling out. There's now a network of 140 charging points across the state and at some you can fill up for free. They look like any other car on the market, but this Tesla is part of a growing trend across Tasmania. Electric vehicles are becoming a popular choice as they become increasingly available to buy. We think there are probably about 300 cars, electric vehicles in Tasmania now and there's certainly been a growth in the last year with a greater range of vehicles being brought into the state for people to buy. Clarence Counts was looking to accelerate the increase of electric vehicles on the road. A 22 kilowatt charging station has been installed in its office car park, plugging into the station via a cable. It offers owners a chance to fill up at no cost. You download an app called Chargebox and with that you can unlock this particular box and then you can have up to two hours free charging. Probably an hour uh, at 60 kilometres an hour, so a little bit more around town when you're doing 50 kilometres an hour or so. And with a two hour charge you get you know, at least 100 kilometres of range. Situated close to the area's shopping district, it's hoped it will encourage more people to visit Clarence.
there's certainly a big interest. Um, and over the last few years, we've seen a lot of people asking about them and when they can get charging stations here. The station joining a network of 140 across the state. Experts say that number will only continue to grow. This will be the first of many charges I see, but also once this is a proven charging point, that it can upgrade to a faster charger quite easily. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. New artificial intelligence technology is hoping to revolutionise the way separating couples resolve disagreements. Amica is online software that is free and analyses a couple's individual circumstances and then suggests how to divide assets. Legal experts are expecting this will minimise the amount of messy and lengthy court cases. And I'm really confident that the artificial intelligence will help people reach fair and equitable settlements. The service is available through the Legal Aid Tasmania website. One of the West Coast's biggest tourism drawcards is set to reopen after months of forced closure. Gordon River Cruises is set to recommence sailings from this weekend, just in time for the school holidays. Due to coronavirus restrictions, passenger limits have been reduced and cleaning between sailings increased. We've introduced uh, strict new safety measures, uh, but certainly people can hop on board uh, and visit uh, the gorgeous Gordon River um, from Friday. Sailings will only take place on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays until interstate borders reopen. 35 kilograms of old mobile phones have been given a new lease of life. Over the past 12 months, more than 300 devices have been deposited at the Town Hall Recycling Hub in Launceston. They contain valuable materials like gold, zinc and copper, which can be used in building new smart devices. The Council initiative has received one of Tasmania's top recycling awards. We really want people to come in, we encourage people to get those phones out of your drawers, bring them in here so that we can recycle even more. Bread tags, coffee pods and even toothpaste tubes can also be repurposed. In the TSL, the ban on Victorians travelling to the state has dealt North Hobart a blow, with Melbourne-based goal magnet Sam Darley unable to play. The good news is the game against North Launceston is officially a sellout. North Launceston and North Hobart couldn't have had more different fortunes in recent years, but Saturday's fixture has managed to pull a capacity crowd of sorts. The maximum of 500 tickets in the stands has been reached, plus more in the indoor members area. It's going to be nice waking up Saturday morning. Hopefully it's a nice day and we can get out here and put on a show for, for those people that are able to come along. But those hoping to catch a glimpse of former Giants and Western Bulldogs player Sam Darley will be disappointed. The Melbourne-based midfielder is locked out. But this strange off-season has also helped the Ds. Norton and Jack Sandrick coming back to the club. Um, Shawnee Willis, who unfortunately lost his career contract, has been able to come back because he was going to travel overseas. With the NAB League pushed back to at least late August, all clubs will benefit from the Tassie Devils' talent. North Launceston also welcomes back four NTFA players after that competition was called off. They're just excited to play together. Uh, they've been waiting for a long time to play together, so that's all they really want to do. And as the weekend's intra-club match at North Hobart showed, isolation and a break from the game has footy fans primed for local leagues. There was probably more people here for an inter-club than there is for some um, games last year. So, you know, everyone's been in lockdown. They're looking forward to... I mean, it's like anything. If it's taken away from you, you want it even more. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening. Below average temperatures today. Minus 7 started us off in Liawini. It was 10 in Hobart and Burnie, Launceston and Devonport 9. St Helens, Flinders Island and Smithton all on our high with 14. King Island 13 today. Strawn 12. Friendly Beaches and Grove 11. Lowhead 10. Liawini moved up to 6 while Bushy Park had a chilly 5 degrees. Mid to low level cloud over us today. The east and south east with less cover. On the bigger picture, more low cloud sits over Bass Strait and through western Victoria and southern New South Wales, mid-level cloud along the eastern seaboard and a band of high cloud drifts over northern western Australia. Tomorrow the high slides to the east, allowing a light northerly stream to develop over Tasmania, a cold front and several troughs over the bight linked to a low in the south. Winds will be nor northwesterly, increasing to 20 knots over the west, lighter inland, two metre swells in western and southern waters. With the expected ice and frost on susceptible roads, a road weather alert has been issued for many parts of the state for tomorrow morning. 
12 the high for Hobart tomorrow after a cool start, 2 overnight, partly cloudy. A morning frost for Signet, 12 the maximum and 12 also for New Norfolk with a cold start as well. 2 to 13 the temperature range for Launceston, bit of fog and a light shower. A light shower for Devonport developing later, 13 the high and 11 the top for Campbelltown. Burnie, a high of 13 with light showers, partly cloudy for Strawn, 14 the top, 14 for Smithton with a shower or two, 14 the high also for St Helens, Swansea and Fingal, all with a bit of cloud but fine. On Friday, fine and partly cloudy apart from a shower over the northwest, another shower over the northwest along with the West and Bass Strait Islands on Saturday, and on Sunday, mainly fine with the exception of the east and southeast where a shower is expected. Partly cloudy in Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne tomorrow. Morning fog in Canberra, sunny 18 in Sydney, showers in Brisbane and Darwin a sunny 32. And temperatures on the slide, down to 7 in Hobart and cloudy, showery in Launceston, 7 as well and 7 degrees in Devonport. Don't know about you Kim but I thought it was really cold today. Lucky we don't have any tourists about to complain about our weather. True, the Victorians, well they've got it cold anyway. That's your news for now, I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night.